Hey everyone, John Moran here with Solutions 8, and today we're going to be discussing what is the SKU performance. Uh, sometimes we get asked this question by you know leads, existing clients, even just you know during our, our speaking engagements or when we're teaching courses, um, and it is a, a long answer. So I thought it was going to be a good idea to make a video about this because this is going to be something that you're going to have to dig to find out uh, to find out the information for. Now, we normally use a tool called Norbeam, but if you're not on Norbeam, I'm going to share with you a way that you can actually combine your Google Ads and your analytics account to find out if you're driving traffic to a specific product, what is actually the full effort of what comes back from driving that traffic to the product. Now, today is not the day that it was 10 years ago, which means that you, you, know, you run an ad, you get a good keyword, you get a good ad, you get a landing page or you know, a dedicated page on your website dedicated to that one product and you turn it on and what is your clicks and your conversion your conversion rate your ROAS etc from one click that's all gone now we have to understand that on average it takes 10 15 20 days sometimes for people to convert they're engaging on your social your organic your email your paid traffic uh, on SEM those channels they are taking a long time to buy and it's unfair to take a look at one channel with one campaign and say what is actually happening from the efforts in that campaign. And I'm going to kind of dip my toe into ways that you can measure both the SKU performance, but also what is the actual revenue and how do you measure against that? And I'm going to share with you why ROAS is not something that you may want to focus on holistically or even, or even solely. It is a good KPI, good key, key performance indicator, but it's not the be all end all. You can have a horrible ROAS, but a great CAC and a great LTV, and you can be very profitable and you can be stopping three feet from gold, as Cosmo always says. Uh, so I want to share this with you today and a good example of that from a higher spend client that I can share with you what you may see on one channel, but looking at it a different way and then also thinking about it even a different way after that could be the key benefits for your company to either a scale or b even just be in the short term much more successful by thinking about it differently and reacting to this differently so let's get started on the screen you're going to see a campaign that's blurred out so what this campaign is is a performance max campaign with one SKU, with one page and what this this campaign and this performance max and this one SKU is doing is driving a very specific product. We're driving as to a very specific product page. Everything's very singular, so we can treat this as an individual SKU. Now, I do have 56 other campaigns in this account running. One of them is a brand campaign, and the other ones are some dynamic remarketing campaigns. And what you're gonna see here initially is on May 1st through May 31st, so this last month in 2022, I spent 67,000, I have 1,200 conversions, and I have uh, $248,000 in conversion value by click and $292,000 in conversion value by time. And the difference between these two is in the last 30 days, the people that clicked, I made $248,000 on. The people that have clicked before May 31st, but converted within May 31st, May, 1st, May 31st is $292,000. So that's the difference between them. And the reason why you'll see this is this is, hey, you have 95% of your conversions you're most likely going to receive 84 uh, more conversions and $13,000 more conversion value. And this is an estimate. You're going to see why there's that delta there is because if we waited one more month, this number here will look more like this number there. <clears throat> so again, 67,000 and $292,000 cash in the bank, I guess I would say with 1,207 conversions. Now, if we look at the ROAS of this, uh, let me do this. I'm trying not to share any, um, let me do row as by time, try not to share any specific, you know, uh, client privileged information, but I do want to share what this looks like. <clears throat> the row as here is 436%. Good. It looks really good. Now in this same time period though, in <clears throat> analytics, remember this number 292,000 In analytics, what I've do done here is I have gone into, let me move that up here over to, to the right. What I've done is looked at the same time period, May 1st, May 31st. Then I've also segmented by a filter of the channel, which is just the Google CPC. So I'm not taking in into consideration anything from Bing or from, which is called Microsoft Advertising now. I will never get over saying Bing. Bing is just going to be stuck in my vocabulary for like the next 10 years. <clears throat> so sorry, Bing. 
but uh, Bing, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, Hulu, any sort of CTV, Critio, Zeta, nothing. So it's only from the Google channel. However, there's going to be a caveat to this, which is what I'll share with you soon. But from the inbound sales that have come from the Google Ads channel, there's uh, $680,000 in product revenue. Now, what's interesting about this is two things are happening here. Google said, hey, they clicked on my ad in this campaign and spent $292,000 with us. But they clicked on any other campaign in my uh, in my uh, account and spent six hundred and eighty thousand. Well, how could that be? Well, in this specific account, my brand name made about a million dollars this last month. Uh, yeah, about a million dollars this last month. Just I think one point one. Inside of that million dollars, what do you think is in there? What do they buy? Well, was it this product here that I know you're is blurred out, but the same product that I'm, I'm sharing on the screen is the same product in that campaign. <clears throat> Did they come back through the brand campaign and end up buying the product that I was pushing traffic to from one campaign? Yes, we have seen that times and times again, that even utilizing Nordbeam is where I can prove it. But I wanted to kind of give you food for thought into how do you measure the overall effectiveness of your marketing? It's not always campaign specific. Not everyone is going to click on that ad and then go into the website and then just click and buy. Sometimes they click, they leave, and they might change devices, change IP addresses, change locations, and they simply just Google the brand name because they want to come back and buy from you. But what are they going to come back and buy from you? What are they actually going to buy? Well, was it the campaign that drove the first one, two, or three clicks to the site looking at that specific product? Most of the time, yes. So when you look at it a different way, you have to think about, well, did they come back through my remarketing campaign? Yes. Did they come back through the brand campaign? Yes. Did they come back through the campaign that was trying to drive the click in the first place? Yes. How much ad spend are you dedicating to that product and what is your net sales from that specific channel? Well, we see that we spent 60, uh, 66,000. We got 292 channel direct clicks and conversions, but in the channel of Google, uh, sorry, not uh, campaign direct clicks and conversion, but the channel that is Google is 680,000. So that's a double. That's a doubling of your revenue. Now, if you're looking at your Google Ads campaign and measuring it just by ROAS, you're like, uh-oh, I need to be at 700, let's say. Well, not to not to you know, not to say that 436 is bad. That's amazing, but the uh, but it's actually in my account total has a 400 ROAS <clears throat> off a 1.5 million dollar spend. So I do think that it is slightly above average, but it even is twice as good as what we're seeing here because we're simply taking the the unknowns about well, what exactly happened after they clicked? What happened? Now, here's where the part that gets a little bit crazy. And I pulled up on the screen a few things to think about. <clears throat> One, ROAS. Is it good? Well, on my Google Ads channel, it's a four. On my analytics from that same channel, it's an eight. Awesome. So we're looking between a you know a four X and an eight X return. Now I think, well, what is the cost for acquired new customer? That's different. That's different than what you see here. That's different than what you see in analytics. Why? Well, is this the first, second, 12th time that they purchase from you? And you can say, yes, I'm only tracking a 90 day click, but what happens if they come back and buy from you every year? They look like a new customer or they look like they had to have clicked on an ad and purchased from you again. So when you're taking into consideration what is new versus repeat, this is a whole different scenario now. This is a big, big, big change. And what I mean by cost of acquired new customer is you can have a row as a four to eight, but the first time the cost of new customer is 100, dollars, let's say, but the second, third, and fourth, and fifth purchase, you know, second, third, fourth, whatever purchase is a CPA of three bucks. Now what happened? Well, you paid dearly for the first time that, that the customer came in and they kept purchasing from you through your brand campaign, let's say, and your brand campaign has a good CPA. So maybe it's, it's $3. Now, what is the average of that? Well, if you're looking at ROAS and you're looking at revenue, your CAC might be somewhere around the $25. Um, sorry, $100 cost per credit customer, but your CPA could be 25 bucks. So you're like, wow, I'm getting a $25 CPA. Well, that's not true. It's four purchases on average. And if you look at your actual customer list, you're really paying $100 and you're paying $5 every single time they come back and buy. That's a different way to think about this now. So now ROAS becomes a little bit less important and the cost of acquiring the new customer becomes important. This is a model that we use very often, the CAC versus LTV. And what does this mean? Well, LTV means that what is the lifetime value of that from a three, six, and even 12 month out? So if you have a three month lifetime value, which means they 
They may purchase again, most likely not. Let's use round numbers here. So the lifetime value of the first purchase is, um, oh, sorry, first three months is $100. Okay, well, what do they spend in six months? Well, a lot of times they do come back about, you know, a 1.5 repeat rate annually means that about half of those or a quarter of those people are going to come by and, and buy a second time. So now actually the LTV is 150. So now we're at 150. Well, what is the LTV of 12 months? We usually get two purchases a year. Now that is $200. So a row has a four to eight, doesn't matter. A CPA of 25, doesn't matter. The cost of acquiring that new customer costs you $100, but the um, lifetime value of it is $200. So now you're actually spending $100 to make $200. And if you look at what is the cost of acquiring a new customer, as long as this does not go up, and a lot of times it does go down with scale, as long as this does not go up, you have a very scalable campaign regardless of what your ROAS or your CPA says. If you get more new customers, your CPA could potentially go up because you have a lot less repeat customers, which means you're not getting the $3 conversions, you're getting more $100 conversions. So your cost per acquisition doubles and you're like, uh-oh, but your tax stayed the same. Why? You had twice as many new customers. <laughs> Tax stayed the same, regardless of CPA. Your ROAS went from four to eight. Oh no, now it went down to 200% ROAS. <gasps> this is, looks bad. Yes, but what is the cost of acquiring that? Well, it's the same. It's just, I'm getting less repeat. I'm getting more news. So my ROAS looks terrible because I didn't get the fast $3 easy ROAS conversion, my $3 CPA. Then I'm spending a hundred that boosted my CPA really, or the, the boost my ROAS really high. So who buys? is actually going to affect your ROAS. Who buys is actually gonna affect your CPA, but your cost of acquiring that new customer is more important than anything else because you can scale that as long as that metric stays the same and as long as your LTV stays the same. Other things you have to think about across pollination. What other efforts on other channels are driving in my brand conversions? Now we have to look at how many new branded conversions, sorry, how many branded conversions are new customers? Because if you can find a cost of acquired new customer on brand, you can spend that to the moon. And if you find the cost of acquired new customer on non-brand, you can spend that to the moon. And if you look at what you're manipulating your other social channels on, for example, or actually driving up or down that cost of acquired new customer, you'll see those two correlate. So your Facebook campaign might have a better CPA or a better ROAS. And you're seeing your brand actually have more sales and less, uh, less CPA and more ROAS. Good. Keep spending on that. Because if you add those two together, what is the cost of acquiring new customer regardless of channel? It's X. Good. Keep scaling. So the other one is the cross pollination between Google ads campaigns. Like, did they buy, if they click on product A, they buy product B that happens about 10% of the time. So just take that in consideration that you're, you might get a sale of an item that you actually never spent a dollar on marketing because they were marketing a different item and they just bought another item after they came to the site. So a few things to think about ancillary things that are not really affecting the, the big, big picture, but things you must think about is why am I receiving sales on that? You can look through the top conversion path and even uh, Google Analytics and identify that that product was actually sold from a first click from a different product that you're marketing for. And is your other channels driving that inbound brand conversion? So two things you want to be very, very considerate of. But at the end of the day, what you want to look at is it's not necessarily ROAS by SKU. It doesn't matter. ROAS by SKU is good. But if I said, if I'm only going to go after all of your customer lists that buy from you every month, I can do a $2,000 ROAS or sorry, 2000% ROAS on all of your existing new customers. You're going to lose money because I'm just spending more to make you the same amount of money. But your ROAS looks fantastic. But the cost of acquiring a new customer is what you have to think about. I don't really care what the ROAS is. Honestly, the ROAS is, is, is a good key performance indicator that I'm heading in the right direction. When the ROAS goes down, if I know my new customer is coming up and my cost of acquiring a new customer is going down, I'm just using my budget more effectively. I, if you're on Shopify, hop into your Shopify account and look at your analytics tab and look at the return of customer rate. And if it's 30%, you can imagine that possibly 30% of your sales, maybe even 40% of your sales that are coming in from even your pay channel are coming in from customers that already know about you and you just keep paying for them over and over again. You can take that money and actually go more towards new customer acquisition. Your ROAS goes down, your CPA goes up, but your CAC may go down. And if your LTV stays the same, you now have made more money. So uh, that's kind of my my little rant here for the day but a thing to think about where it's not skew specific it's not campaign specific but you have to think about this holistically what does it cost to acquire a customer what do they spend over a long enough time period but obviously after all of your costs and your net profit do you equate to being profitable and if your ltv stays the same and your cost of acquiring a customer stays the same keep adding an asset and one last thing to think about when you're looking at the cac versus ltv is how far do you want to spend into your future profitability Remember that time period I said it was three months, you know, six months, a year. If I make an LTV over a year period of $200, but my first month cost is $100 and it costs me $100 to make that, that first time revenue of that $100, I don't see profitability until year two. 
that's fine if I'm probably VC funded and I have a 10 year ramp up. But if you're like, hey, I'm, I can't just eat off nothing for the next year, you'll need a ROAS of let's say 200% on your first time, your first time sale. So your cost of acquiring a customer would be one fourth of the one year LTV in that scenario. Say I have to cost me $50 to make 100 in the first purchase, then by year two, I made 200. Now my year is $50 in, $200 out, or average over 12 months. So don't get too aggressive by saying like, oh my gosh, I'm going to make six grand by year seven. I'm going to spend $7,000 cost for acquired new customer. You just broke even for the next seven years. That's how that scenario works. So uh, please let me know if you like this video. Think about this in a different way. It's a lot of fun to fun to kind of measure performance in a, and not necessarily pigeonhole yourself into one campaign's performance for once you, there's much more stuff going on here. So just things to think about when you're measuring success of your Google Ads campaign. I'm John Ram Solutions 8. Thank you so much. See you next time. Wait, before you go. I'm constantly looking for amazing people to come join our team. So if you're passionate about Google ads and you're passionate about customer success, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. And we'd love to see you as a part of the solutions 18. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that we actually know what we're doing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We shoot a video every single day and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Lastly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confessions, or you just hate my face, and my voice, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We get very little human interaction. And even the heckling is something that I kind of get a kick out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribers. If you're a subscriber, don't forget to apply if you're interested in working at Solutions 8. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.